it's Wednesday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. We have Dami joining us today. Good morning. Good morning How are you doing? You're looking very fabulous as always. Thank you. Thank it's you. Good to be here to at least join the ladies of your view. Don't English. You know, English yeah. during the week. We are for the weekend as yeah. you are very people. Yes. Yeah, so right. How are you doing? How? It's a beautiful day today in Lagos and I'm sure it's a beautiful day with everybody today. Like I always say, at least all the problems we're facing, we're still alive. So we can really? kick in. Yeah. Keep the hope alive. Good morning, uh, Nigeria again. Fantastic. How are you doing, Topsy Tops? What's I'm happening? very good. Like you're not doing anything today. I have plenty of announcements. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm doing plenty of things. Okay. Um, so one is I have a mentorship program that I spoke about last year. It was something I've been, I've been working on, but I didn't talk about it again because I wanted to put all the structure in place. We unveiled it at the Game of Money conference. So it's a real estate mentorship and mastery program. It's a one-year mentorship program. Um, and but there's a two weeks boot camp. The two weeks boot camp is starting on the 1st of April. So registration is ongoing. We are only taking care of 50 people. Out of those 50, 10 people, I'll work with them one on one. And I have made <laughs> both to say that I will make them money making machine ah. um, because I'm going to grill them. So if you don't want to follow instructions, don't come. If you, do, if you are not hungry for <laughs> success in your life, don't come. Don't I was talking yesterday. I said, I said, you are not hungry. You're not hungry because in the past one month, you haven't done anything to market what you say you want to have. I said, the car you want to buy last year. You, your, the money you were going to use to buy last year cannot afford half of the I like cards. So, so now. I want people that are hungry for mm. success, who understand the right mindset. Yes, there's a payment mm. for the two weeks boot camp. But the one mentorship is me just holding your hands and encouraging you every step Get of the way, you telling you step by step what to How do. How much so. are we talking about? Oh, it's not, it's 100,000 Naira. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's not really, it's not, it's, not, it's, not about, it's not about the money. I know how much I pay yeah. to access the people that I'm accessing, that are mentoring me and guiding me. Your trainings me. as well, you know how the, much you pay to I, pay, I pay for trainings. Yeah. The I like last to, one I do. Uh, I like to sponsor two people. Oh, wow. You're sponsoring two people. Ka 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 oh, 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 you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was sponsoring two people. You, 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 you want to sponsor? Um, yes, no, I do. yes, I do. Yes, okay, yeah. The two people. All right. So why I sponsor two people? You can join us and be among the 50. The remaining 98 should fill in. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, be Ajilu, are you, you don't wake up today. No. Oh, oh you're <laughs> glowing. She's I'm into skincare Africa now. Yeah. I'm launching my um, face cream very soon. Yeah. Glow face cream. To ah. add to the collection of a body by BC product that I already have, oh. so I've been testing it on oh, my skin ah. and uh -uh. everywhere I go, it's I'll glow. And I'm like, ah, why do I have to cover this beauty with makeup? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's show the face the way it is. I hope you guys like it. Oh, I love it. This is just for the camera. Just change. chop it. Yeah. Oh, Alex Gloria to your name. Oh my no. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yesterday I was home cooking all through. You know now, the new girls do yeah. not have a clue. They do oh, not understand. Or guy went to work without food, so I ah. had to ask the driver to come back to get his meal. He normally takes food yeah. to work. Yeah. So I was cooking, I was sorting out my little girls' uh, projects. We were working together yesterday. I was so tired. By yeah. 10 uh, p.m., I was already knackered, you know. And I'm going to be doing this for a while now till the girls get used to. Mm. And um, he actually likes me doing the cooking, mm. but he stresses me out. You know? yeah. I've, I've paid my dues. I've got yeah. my dues. Yeah. And I was You're global now. I was AM to cook this food for you. Mm. Yeah. Internet was not there to dash me money. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so that was glowing. Thank yeah. you. That was what happened all through yesterday. Mm. How are you doing, Mariah? Uh, I'm doing very well, actually. You know, I'm just, I'm just grateful to God. There's so many things happening, but you know, I'm waiting for you to materialize and quit. Ah, and the when the God is done. When it's done. Yeah, yeah. I'm just grateful. God is just faithful so much is happening um i think i'm getting clarity on certain things and you know Exciting. i don't like to rush into things and people mm -hmm. always put me under time. serious pressure do this do this i'm like mm -hmm. i hear everybody mm -hmm. let me do it on my at my own time on my own pace so i'm good i'm i'm grateful for the new season and i'm oh. thankful for so much going on let's go i still buy mariah's book oh, queen of talk. hey talk hey my sister yeah, the book is still i'm not selling, selling i'm not selling, right? selling again i'm still back I really pause. talking about it. yeah so oh. i was supposed to do on monday but i was so i had so much work mm -hmm. tuesday my, my pay kept reminding me i just swamped mm. so today i will try to go and back sometimes online sometimes you always have to be mentally stable yeah, god but bless you they are announcing to people to now things. that yeah. they want to Please, understand more about book. media yeah. the of talk, talk. Is i will definitely thing. go i might do my thing we'll help her do let's go yes. on a short <laughs> break now we come back we continue and uh, have our paper review stay with us we'll be right back stay tuned your view will be right back
Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Congrats to Tinubu, the visioner, Sanwolu, the actualizer. In 2025, Undo will understudy Sanwolu, says Jimo Ibrahim. Our economy not in distress, says Tinubu. 70,000 tractors needed to enhance food security. Binance exits Nigeria over Forex crisis. Which story are we starting with in the nation? Yes, so let's talk about the food uh, security. It's been on the front burner for a while now. So the minister, Abubakar Kiari, had said that Nigeria needs at least 72,000 tractors for farmers to engage in mechanized farming and contribute massively to curbing the food inflation or food crisis in the country. And he said this at a sectoral debate organized by the House of Representatives in Abuja yesterday. He also said that only 5,000 tractors are currently in working condition at farmlands across the country, but that the ministry had signed an agreement with manufacturers for the supply of 2,000 additional tractors. Um, it's going to be annually for the next five years. So he spoke, um, uh, as well as um, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission um, minister as well, Okay, no, the Nigerian Customs Service um, also announced that they had arrested 141 trucks heading out of the country with loaded smuggled uh, items. And while they were making the presentation, he said the rising uh, food crisis in the country was duly main to uh, smuggling. You see that a lot of people have been taking, they've been getting people trying to smuggle our food out of the country. Flooding also included COVID-19 insecurity and the fact that um, the CBN tried to do the cash swap uh, last year which really affected most of the small scale farmers. He said but they have a long and medium uh, short term measures that will include funding wheat, rice, cassava production and that will also help to alleviate mm. what we are going through and also I think the um, uh, president had given a directive that they should open all the storehouses and you know distribute food very cheaply to Nigerians. By the end of the day, we'll see how we can sort out that issue. All right, so the uh, <clears throat> National Assembly have decided to in, um, start an investigation um, the, towards the cryptocurrency and blockchain digital assets transactions in Nigeria. As many of you know, Binance recently left Nigeria after the $10 billion fine that was, uh, in, um, that was prescribed to them. Um, according to the House of Representatives, it said it's to identify threats to national security and gaps in legislative framework statutes, regulatory, and detriment of our country. Uh, the steps were taken recently. And um, um, furthermore, the House also said they will be investigating um, international money transfer operators in Nigeria, payment gateways, and platforms, cloud computing infrastructure, the entire value chain of, of the cryptocurrency within Nigeria. And if you remember, we have eNaira. So they're also going to be investigating how that's doing on the global cryptocurrency platform. So it's important because there's so much um, illegalities within that um, space. And it's so important let me just that they... take the story about Binance then, okay. because Binance, is, they have officially announced that they are stopping um, they will stop providing any service to Nigerians in Naira. So they are, this is um, starting from the 5th of March. Every um, Binance, any, Binance, any Nigerian um, Naira-denominated Binance balance must be withdrawn. It's already converted to USDT, stablecoin, and mm -hmm. that um, they are no longer doing any transaction in Naira, providing any support for Nigerians in Naira. So your transaction needs to be done, they said, Users have to withdraw their Naira um, deposit. They will stop supporting Naira for sports <coughs> trading, peer-to-peer, -peer, um, auto invest, and Binance Pay. All will no longer happen in yeah. Naira. And that is because of the fact that the Nigerian government um, clamped down on them, um, yeah. um, discovered some of the ways that their transaction was hurting the Nigerian economy and why that they were some money in that thing. I forgot. So. I mm. Mm. Oh, you withdrew that time now. I, mean, I just left it there. Left it there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It has, it's it's gone. Gone. <laughs> it has gone. It has gone now. Gone. No, 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 it's still there. Oh. It's just that they've converted it to USDT, so yeah. it's not available in Naira. You yeah. can only withdraw. We're going to be creating another, another business because whenever we do um, stops one channel, the another one opens yeah, up. Loop 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 so, but at least this is directly not in Naira. Do you have a story nation or we move on? No, we'll move okay, on. Move on to the punch. <clears throat> uh, federal government intercepts 141 grain trucks. Drivers threaten strike over attacks. Nigeria's electricity fuel subsidies may go up 7 trillion naira, says IMF. Army chief dismisses coup, uh, coup calls, uh, demands good leadership. Mm. 
767 manufacturers shut down in 2023, says man. Trial. Suspected killer of Ikiti Monarch remanded. Reps grew ministers over ports concession on Tuesday. Okay, which do we have in punch? I have a um, Nigerian army has said there's no desire to truncate Nigeria's democracy. And then um, the chief of army staff. Lieutenant General Tarid Labaja on Tuesday restated that the commitment of the Nigerian army to defend the nation's democracy, addressing participants at the seminar on career planning and management organized by the Nigerian army headquarters. And um, he said that he's charging the officers of Nigerian army, of the Nigerian army, to remain above board in the discharge of their professional duties. He also said that, permit me to seize this opportunity to reiterate that the, army force, the armed forces of Nigeria, particularly in Nigerian army, has no um, resolution and has come to terms with the country's choice of democracy as preferred system of governance. He said, during the, he said this during the address to the officers. So mm. I think that this is just to dispel the rumor. Most times um, when things happen like this or when we hear things like this, we are quick to ask mm. the officers in charge of this, um, the uh, people in charge, what are they saying? Because a lot of times Nigerians do not hear anything and mm -hmm. they say they allege um, against the Nigerian mm -hmm. army or the Navy and we are not hearing not any, they won't come out to say it's not true. true. So this is a good one, at least to dispel the rumor out there that um, probably the military will take over and we are not going the Malian way. No. <laughs> Never. Okay, uh, yeah, have so a, yeah, punch the trial. You know, we've been following up the story of the suspected killers of um, Ekiti Monarchs. They've been remanded and the trial is going to be starting. So the Ekiti Magistrate Court on Tuesday remanded the 25 year old Baguda lady in the correctional facility for his alleged involvement in the killing of two traditional rulers within Ekiti State. The traditional rulers are Eleshun of Eshun Ekiti, Oba David um, Ogunshake, and Olomojo of Imojo Ekiti, Oba Samuel Ulushola. Of course, our heart still goes out to the entire family. Mm. They were killed uh, along <coughs> the road in Okiako, um, really. Hey, hey, hey. I'm, my mother is from Ekiti. I shouldn't be bastardizing. Shame on you, sir. <laughs> January 29th. Um, the police are prosecuting the case. The police prosecutor, Yomio um, Oshun Olade, Olale, says they've arranged this, the suspect. I'm sure a lot of Ikiti citizens are happy. I'm sure a lot of traditional rulers are happy that there is some, some sort of progress towards um, getting justice for these two monarchs who were killed in a very gruesome way. And our heart remains with the family as we are with justice for them. All right, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue. What happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it. Women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. 
We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. It's not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So like if I had a very, very interesting... <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't want to work with who? No There's no judgment. No, and I respect, oh, judge you I respect this judge you. certain type of people. But what I dislike so much is when you, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their resentments from on you. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. My mom just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month, and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. Thank you, Stephen. That was still revealing points. You have a story. story. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria said that uh, 767 manufacturers shut down operations, while 335 became distressed just last year, 2023. And this is as a result of the exchange rate of volatility, rising inflation, and other economic challenges that also worsened the investment climate. And um, they said this... Um, well, because I think the federal government introduced, yes, the federal government introduced an expatriate employment levy uh, recently introduced, and um, the association is saying that this is just so um, unbelievable that this levy runs contrary to President Bala Ahmed Sinubu's renewed hope uh, that he's been clamoring for, and this would also bring about negative consequences on the manufacturing sector, and it cannot even be accommodated at this time. So they, they said this statement, and I want to quote, it says, the imposition of the EEL poses a potential impact on the manufacturing sector and the economy at large. This will in turn mark an unwarranted and unprecedented addition to the cost of doing business in Nigeria, especially to the manufacturers. The manufacturing sector is already beset with multidimensional challenges in the year 2023. It said 335 manufacturing companies became distressed and uh, 767 shut down and um, they said the capacity utilization in the sector has declined to 56 percent amid rising interest rates and scarcity of forex which is needed to import raw materials and machinery i actually had a meeting with my manufacturer yesterday and it was scary i just wanted to back out because the prices that had gotten to produce the uh, next batch and the new product had increased by over 200 percent so i was looking at myself and like how do i now close this business that i'm just about to start imagine people who are not able to sustain their businesses closing up because they can no longer procure raw material so i really do not understand the uh, initiative or the idea behind mm. this imposition of this levy can we calm down on some of these levies that are coming to manufacturers at the moment and see how Probably our Naira becomes a bit stronger mm. before we can, can implement other yeah. things. IMF is warning us that uh, uh, they said that Nigeria may incur an expenditure of uh, 7 trillion Naira should the existing fuel pump price Ew. cap and electricity subsidy be upheld in 2024. Remember, our government is trying very hard to remove that subsidy on electricity, mm. and um, they're telling us they removed the one on, on fuel, though. Many, do, many still deny that. Still, uh, but uh, according to IMF, there's a capping of fuel pump prices and electricity tariffs below cost recovery could have a fiscal cost of up to 7 trillion naira. Um, this was stated yesterday, and um, it's, it's, it's an interesting warning, but I think we all, we all have an idea of all this, but we don't like the numbers. The numbers. Mm. Move on quickly now to Daily Sun. How we are taking the economy out of the woods, says Tinumbu. I'm not desperate to the president, says Peter Obi. Hardship not ending soon, ex CBN Deputy Governor warns. Labels Jonathan Buari Tinubu's eras, years of low cost. Commuters groan as protesters block Benin Auchi Lokoja Road. Restructuring. Our blueprints ready, says Afeni Ferry. Ogun Governor Abiodun eulogizes Obasanjo. The Sun Publisher Partner Schools to promote STEM studies among girls. And Sharia Council blasts FG for poor state of affairs. Okay, which story? So we know uh, October 2022, the United Arab Emirates implemented a ban on citizens from approximately 20 African nations from entering their borders. And among the affected countries are Nigeria, Uganda, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Cameroon, Liberia, Burundi, 
Republic of Guinea, Gambia, Togo, Democratic Republic of Congo, Senegal, Be uh, Benin Republic, no, and no, others. Yes. <laughs> About a few uh, days ago, there's been this report circulating social media and other places that they had lifted the ban, which was supposed to take effect from March 4th. Uh, 2024 but you know the presidency has debunked that report saying that nothing like that has happened it has not been lifted at all and there is no document the document in circulation is not authorized <laughs> either by the nigerian government or the uae so we should just calm down and see how it plays out okay so peter Obi is speaking again he says that um he was speaking yesterday reiterating his earlier position that he was not desperate to be president of Nigeria. He spoke during the 16th edition of the Leadership Annual Conference um, where he was honored as the 2023 Politician of the Year Award. He said, I have said it everywhere. I am not desperate to be president. I am desperate to see Nigeria work and I'm desperate to see Nigeria fight poverty. Obi argued uh, that Nigeria had no reason to be part of the poor countries in the world, uh, especially northern Nigeria. He, he added that there are more, there's more money in agriculture than oil and any day, any time that we must obviously move into production. I need, I need, so, I mean, this is just pretty much, and he was referring to what he said concerning why we imported um, um, food from mm -hmm. Ukraine. He says, I read yesterday that Ukraine is giving Nigeria green and Ukraine is at war. The whole of Ni Northern Nigeria, and he just went yeah. on and on about So, okay, he was trying to defend, so that people were politicizing <coughs> his comments. Though the government has replied that particular statement that there was nothing wrong in collecting grains from Ukraine yeah, because okay. they needed to solve the problem of hunger at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, however, there's a bit of good news for workers in Ocean State. The judiciary, um, um, under the auspices of the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, just soon on Tuesday announced that they are suspending their um, three, over three month strike on the mandate of the Judicial Service Commission to convene a meeting within seven days to enable the commission <coughs> attend to other matters. The union has been on strike. I do not believe that any country that really, 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 really wants justice would, take, would, would, would not pay attention to the Judicial um, Staff Union. We take care of our judges, but this it will run. Say that every... Say that to every... <laughs> no, no. no. Like, do, we have to be alive now. We have to be alive. So you say the same thing for all the but it's okay. Health, right. education, ju uh, judiciary. There are things that we can do without. We, we might not have good roads. We will manage. But if we cannot go to the hospital, how do we... Ah. We are not alive now. Uh -huh. So those are the issues. But they, they are calling off the strike. I always like us to do it before the strike. But this one, they've been on strike for a long time. Now they're calling off the strike. Within this next seven days, let us deal with whatever issue they've come up with. <laughs> Okay, are we done with um, Sun? So, no yes, yes. Okay, let's move on to Vanguard. Nigeria must battle rising food insecurity <laughs> as priority, says IMF. Lagos LGA's huge allocations related development. Dangote plans trading arm of refinery. Apapa gridlock returns. Trucks ignore Samulu's directive. Nigerians should be, shouldn't be hungry. Insecure, Sharia Council tells federal government. Uh, 4 billion Naira COVID-19 grant. Operators not indebted to FFG, others, United Airlines CEO reps, tells, um, reps. Uh, Army not planning to truncate Nigeria's democracy, says Lagbaja. And Meta reacts through Twitter as Facebook, Instagram crash. I didn't even realize mm. Facebook and Instagram. I did not realize. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't. I think yesterday I was in Abekuta anchoring an event. So when I got back home, and I started seeing on X Twitter, and there was a subtle shade oh, wow. from Elon Musk saying mm. that, oh, um, I think next time that our servers are up and people started running to Twitter to ask each other if Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> and I think for a moment, um, it cost a bit of disarray because I was reading comments and businesses. people now started understanding that, oh, we rely too much or so much on mm. social media and technology. How about our physical businesses? But going back to what BC said <laughs> in her review that even the physical businesses are, are folding up, they are struggling. So why do we now balance it? So let me take the story. Since you already started with the comments, <laughs> billions of Mark Zuckerberg's led Meta, Instagram, and Facebook users were yesterday thrown into dark hey, hey, hey. as the social media platforms experienced total outage. Me, I couldn't notice. <laughs> users across the globe reported widespread problems, including being logged out. Oh, Brown. It happened to Brown. <laughs> logged out, encountering error messages, and being unable to refresh their feeds. This led to total panic across the world as users expressed panic and first, okay, now I know what happened. Uh, but, I, but I think it just shows how addicted we have become to this thing. It happened to me with the yeah, addiction. The fact that we don't have the technology, we are dependent. Right. We don't have our own local dependency version. Dependency mm. cost addiction. Yes, it feels yeah. like even when your battery is low, you can't survive. You can't you survive. Yeah. Immediate spots to just like I need to charge my phone. And right. sometimes it's, it bewilders me when people go around with chargers. 
because I don't go around with my chargers. I'm like, if my phone dies, I have one small one that you can call. Yeah. So if, if I'm not online, just person. call me. Yeah, okay. and Any other story? Yeah, so okay. we have the challenge of a proper gridlock. We discussed this thing. We discussed it, um, I think it was last week, we had one of the, um, a member of the high-ranking people within that, the uh, truckers, I think it was the truckers, truckers. So anyway, the governor had given an instruction concerning the trucks and the, governor, the governor's instruction has been completely shunned. He said the development um, in defiance to the governor of Lagos State that there was a vacation order to indiscriminate parking of trucks on the expressway. Tankers and articulated vehicles are back on bridges along the high highways packed. The special advisor to the governor on transportation, Mr. Sholagiwa, a friend of the house, has already commented on this. Last month has collected on it. They attributed the gridlock to the road constructions and the, um, the oil depot operating within those areas that they have directed relevant agencies that the last month should go there and clear it off. But it seems like it is, um, that they, they said any tanker or truck that is impeding, impeding the free flow of traffic will be impounded. The challenge is once they try impounding one or two, mm. we'll call for strike and we'll go back to start negotiating. But we Start's need to find a long-term solution. Once again, the article reiterated that over 100 billion naira is being lost monthly to the gridlock that is happening yeah. in the Papa Expressway. Yeah, so uh, still speaking on food um, in, um, scarcity and crisis that's bedeviling us right now, lots of people are talking, adding their voices to it. So the International Monetary Fund, IMF, uh, yesterday said the federal government uh, needs to pay immediate attention to food insecurity in the country. Uh, the governors on, on one hand are saying that we need to go back into uh, production, into agriculture, and that's the way that we're going to get out of this hardship. The former um, Anambra State Governor and the 2023 presidential candidate of the LP has said that um, he, he talked about the hardship and he said that he was not desperate to be president, but desperate to make Nigeria work. And that is only focus. Also, the former Deputy Governor of Financial Stability of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, uh, Professor Kingsley Morgalo, now advocated sale of government assets to raise funds totaling 18 to 20 billion US dollars, which could be channeled into uh, foreign reserves to stabilize, uh, stabilize the forex and you know, help us to overcome the economic challenges. The president, on the other hand, is assuring uh, Nigerians to be patient, that his economic reforms will stabilize the country uh, very soon, that we just need to... See, everybody has all the answers Calm outside. down. Well, outside the government. When you yeah, enter. Yeah. 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 Because if I sell our assets to foreigners, for example, we are still going to be not to complain. Why are you selling our uh, assets? And it's Nigeria. Who can afford it within Nigeria? So there's, there's so many angles. It looks so nice on paper. But once it's time to personalize so it, all the different things. Really yeah. But that's all we can take on front page review this morning. When we come back, we want to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, have you? Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we, thank we try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Well, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. Uh, no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Kelechi <laughs> Amadi. No. <laughs> she, you didn't whine me. me. You whine me. No. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known it as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym means. Tell me the. The, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is, that's very easy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's, out there. it's supposed to be. Yeah. I just said, let me I give you this one as a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. You didn't say final answer. Final answer. You, did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you know, Michael. How, many, how many cameras do they have? Michael. I went to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Michael now.
Oh, hello guys. Come closer. Now this is not a magic trick, but I'm about to show you the best breakfast show on television. Ready? Three, two, one, go. This is Wake Up Nigeria. On Wake Up Nigeria, we take your mornings from drab to fab. A quick look at the newspaper headlines to keep you updated on news and current affairs. There's sports, great features and places to go, and things to do. It's lights, cameras and movie madness because we squeeze the best blockbusters into bite-sized reviews. Our award-winning and sometimes Guinness World Breaking chefs perform a culinary masterpiece every single morning inside of the kitchen that leaves us salivating and asking for more. Our book reviews is always a page turner with thrilling stories, gripping memoirs and fascinating tales. We keep you entertained with music performances, trending topics and fun Friday games. <laughs> I'm on traffic today from Shasha Boston. So you guys plan to set me up? Nah, 60 seconds is not enough to tell you all about Wake Up Nigeria. It's like trying to fit a T-Rex inside of a teacup. You'd have to tune in every morning at 7 a.m. to enjoy a whirlwind of excitement, laughter and unforgettable moments. Wake Up Nigeria, your tickets to a fabulous start every weekday morning. speaking fluent Igbo with his grandmother, the boy whose father is Igbo and mother is a foreigner who believes she's probably Asian or so, was raised abroad. He was taught to speak Igbo and a video of him speaking Igbo fluently uh, with uh, in a weary accent has earned him praises from viewers. However, this begs a question for us as Nigerians because many of us don't speak our languages anymore mm. and our children don't even understand our languages. And we've tried to get people to reconnect with the foundation, with who we are and our heritage. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? And um, um, how do you think the rest of us, especially those of us in Nigeria, can learn from this kid's home training to raise our children in rights. Or what do you think? Because others have a perspective that <coughs> if you're living abroad, you don't need your local language. What do you need your local language for? You don't plan to live in Nigeria anyway. What are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081-0764-1679-09024-163440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect using the hashtag YourViewTV so we can read your tweets. I'd like to show you the clip of this video so you have an idea of what we're talking about. <laughs> Maybe. Maria, my the my the
I don't even know what to do. I just clap. I just scream. We should clap. We should clap. We should celebrate the dance. First of all, before we move on, yes. what is he saying? Okay, so um, he has been compl he was complaining in the video that um, the sister, who is the Ada, that's the first, first girl. Ada means first girl, uh, who was supposed to be more domesticated and handle the chores, always passes the chores to him. Mm. So when grandma asks them to clean the room or sweep the house, he w she will not stand up. She will allow him do it. So he has to do that. And he was now explaining that when she gets married, she's the one that's supposed to cook for her husband and clean the house, and, but she's not doing it now. So it's not a case of Jacob and his mother. So I don't know where he got that from. But it was just funny how he was explaining that yeah. he's domesticated more than his yeah. you know, sister, who and is a girl. Yes. But, and it's so, it's funny. so many it's of us funny. enjoyed watching the video, maybe out of guilt, because many of us are like, hmm, I wish my children could speak like My this. But what, are, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, let me just quickly say that. And I, before the Agbalagba starts calling, the older people start calling, many of them raised us yeah. to see our language as vernacular. Yeah. Many of us. So nobody should call and start accusing any our own generation. <laughs> We're not doing the needful because it was how we were raised. I remember I was, I was spanked for speaking Yoruba because that, that, was, oh, how we just, we, that, 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 was, that was that was a mentality then. But now that we, have, we are older, we see better, we know better. Well, we're trying to do things differently. But what are your thoughts? Let's start with the video. What are your thoughts on the video first? Uh, I think when I reached out to a friend of mine yesterday and we were actually discussing, he came up somewhere and he, he mentioned that it was not even the Annan brand language, that it was um, the local, local dialect. dialect. That, um, I think he said, Umu, I, I've forgotten now. but Umu he, he mentioned that because he's Igbo and sometimes when I come up with things like this go to comment section then call people who can actually give you a breakdown on it but for me I like the fact that I want to say thank you to my father he didn't raise us with mm. English I remember my father's friend come to the house one day mm. and he was speaking in English to us and we re responded in Europe it was my sister and I my older sister and I then when my dad came in he said Shegu I'm okay so you bully then my dad said so so I want to down <laughs> Do you understand that? Did you speak English? Do you understand? Like Do you understand English? But it's uh, it's uh, it's um how would I put it? It's a thing that I've put on the floor in the house that my children must. Which I think that when I started my career as a broadcaster, too, I started from the Yoruba genre. Yeah. I started speaking Yoruba, and mm -hmm. it's like yeah. people ask me, like, ah, did you study Yoruba in school? And in my way, I had Yoruba in one. I don't know how <laughs> that happened. So sometimes, yes, it affects. It starts from even names, the names that we give our children. We're not even proud of the indigenous names mm, we bear that more. carry so much meaning mm. yeah like you hear the chibweze mm. chikodi you mm. when you're Igbo, you know these names and you understand the meaning yeah. when you come to yoruba you hear your lua tayo Oluwati Fe. you already understand but mm -hmm. these days even now the generations after us are quick to do the jason yeah, it's gonna be amanda <laughs> and i saw a skit um, i think from one of the popular influencers on tiktok instagram and she said that oh Later in the next 10 years, you have like 100 people bearing Jason, and you go to your child's school, and you're like, Please call me Jason. And which like, of the Jason? You, which of the Jason? <laughs> so it starts like that. So mm -hmm. I think that we should go back to the roots. <clears throat> Some of our parents maybe didn't raise us like that. I was raised with Yoruba language. Fantastic. So, fantastic. Like my mom would say, To bad boy, they are right. Holy boy, they are me. If you don't understand, and that is language, so valid. You can't I, 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 I didn't, find, language, I didn't so. find that out until much later in life that it was important for you to speak your own indigenous first yeah i've always shared this story several times my husband said he did not start speaking english until gss1 mm -hmm. huh. and when he speaks english it's even so much better than me because he learns english the proper way he didn't learn it from house he, girl, driver. Mm -hmm. he didn't learn it from the, 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 the yeah. you know the yeah. the parlance the way we're speaking it out there lo, lo, the loose colloquial language we're using back then he learned it properly so when he speaks he speaks well compared to someone like me that we're always just speaking regular house english but let me come to you top of how was how did the video uh, make you feel sweet so there's something about seeing this young gen alpha boy and he's <clears throat> expressing himself fluently in his native native language it was sweet to watch and it was also indicting so it was indicting for me because i have children that do not understand any of their native language and they live in nigeria i've been in this circle for the past five between five to eight years, because we've been on the show, we've discussed this thing several times, so I know that it's important. Um, however, when I, when I travel and I meet Nigerians, Nigerian kids brought up in America speaking native language, I feel more indicted that I can do better. And we're working on it. Why? Because it's important for children's identity. They're going to interact in a world where people mm. will challenge who they are and they will call them out. But when, they are in, when it is ingrained in them, 
and they understand their language. If you call me a bad name in English, I will call myself who I am in Yoruba because my, mo my grandmother and my mom, um, they have given me my identity. Um, identity. What if I'm in Yoriki? Mm. So let me tell you how powerful Yoriki is. I'm having the chills because I remember my mom saying it. I was really insulted as a child that I was too tall. Then my mom would tell me that I am from where I am from, Ijebui, Tad Tebo. Like when she says it, I, do, I no longer feel bad about the fact that I'm tall. Like I am tall. When I wear it, I wear different outfits. It will stand out on me. I had that identity as a teenager because I was facing bullying in school and there was nothing I could do about my height or my looks. But she gave me that confidence from yeah. my i don't um, there's a word they used to call oriki in english i can't find it but like those words gave me the an identity energy. my act energy. so those gave me my identity and i think it is extremely important now because our children are interfacing with social media they go on tiktok they see somebody twerking they don't have that body or they see somebody speaking something and they say it in a different way and those things the way they said it because i live in an american accent they go viral so you are using nigerian accent and you're wondering what's going on so there are going to be many things that would attack them <clears throat> Being in having a sense of identity and in, most importantly, their language mm. helps with that. It also yeah. helps with correcting when you want to yeah. say, Magbae There's no, it's not that to say it, you can say Magbae and they will get the message straight Let up. Let me come to you, Pissi. What are your thoughts? Ah, when I saw the video yesterday, it just reminded me uh, last year when we were coming back from uh, France, we were in the plane with this Nigerian uh, Igbo guy, and his wife was white, and the kids, mixed breed, were all speaking the local language and the wife was speaking the local language with the children so i had to go and congratulate him and i was telling my yoga say see see your mate <laughs> see your mate to see what's happening you know um it, it made me feel guilty it made me feel guilty because i believe i could have done better i was raised in my local language i speak my local language fluently i speak the central Igbo fluently like that's the local because i am asaba right our local dialect is different from the central Igbo but i speak both I can move in between both fluently. And I, ma I, I would say I married too early. Mm -hmm. We didn't have this kind of sense when we were married. I would have just structured it in such a way that I would be speaking to yeah. my children. Because I felt that because I don't speak the same language with my husband, it would be difficult. He's fluent. He's born, he was born in Lagos. So he's fluent in Yoruba. And I know that when my mom comes to visit and my husband and my mom are chatting, I feel Let out of out. place. Like, <laughs> ah, you teach me this thing as so I can speak to my mom, you know. So um, I think we are all finding our way back to our roots. Mm -hmm. What the colonialists did was to take us out of our identity and, you know, brandished their own as superior. Mm -hmm. And at the time we were being raised, we we're seeing everything white, everything uh, English, mm -hmm are superior than ours and that's why we call our own vernacular you're not allowed to say it in, in in the classroom in secondary school at the time but now the world is changing where people are beginning to ask the right questions who am i where did i come from what's my genealogy what's my history we're all going back there and it's something that we do in collaboration see how excited we were now seeing somebody speak our local language a few years back it will not be like this mm. you tell him to show please just don't say it outside, but it's changing now, and we need to embrace you know, it. You interestingly, um, I mean, over the weekend, I mean, in my own house, my first child understands you guys. Now, unfortunately, the problem is identity. So she understands the language, but she pretends not to. Oh. You know, because she still feels that, ah, then my friends don't know that I understand. But I, she understands it very clearly. Wow. Now, I'm now trying to get the other ones to also, those ones, their five languages, like zero today, and they don't, they don't have a clue. <laughs> Just I'm trying to hard to get them. But interestingly, last weekend, while we were watching Ali Kulako, I, I called, I called everybody, I said, you know, from today, I want everyone to start calling me Iyami. Don't call me mommy. Mommy, okay. And all the, all the kids were excited, but the first one was like, no, I'm not calling you that because I can't be calling you that outside. And I'm thinking, you are going to be calling me that outside. <laughs> and she's there, since Saturday to now, she has not called me. She will tell me that one. Because it's embarrassing. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And that's why we need to fix that. Mm. We need to fix the way we have flipped it such that what is ours is embarrassing. Mm. What is ours is not something we're proud to say outside. Yeah. And we also, and it has been done all of us collectively. collectively. Yeah. Because if I train my child to love my language and you don't, then it becomes there your child will yeah. yeah. make my own feel embarrassed. Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be a collective effort. We as Nigerians must 
totally sit down and say, this is what we want. Mm. Oh, regardless, of, regardless of where we are. I love the Yami matter. I love the... Yeah. Mommy, and I think it's something I would bring up in yeah. my house as I, well. I think I, I, started, I started about four yeah. years, four or five years back when my first son was about five. He's going to be 10 now. Mm. And I made sure that every weekend mm. we speak Yoruba. Mm. So mm -hmm. when I'm saying that, Dario Laya Lobekinye, he will drag and like, mm. I'm coming. I say, mm, mm. speak that one. <laughs> so it sounds funny, yes. really, but we are grooming them to do it. Another thing that got me attracted to that video what I would say parents should also do better is the fact that the boy was complaining mm -hmm. that because she is an ada, she should do the job. No, we should train boys equally. <laughs> you shouldn't see. Like, I know that he wasn't out trying hey, to... Hey, let me pause. That, me, that one is a different, different matter. matter. Let's, let's not <laughs> down, <laughs> let's not down <laughs> this important <laughs> one. Here. Well, you're right. You're very right. But that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. Okay. Let's focus let's on language day. today. Let, yeah. let me come to the feeling of I don't want that name or that word or I don't want to be seen as the person calling my mom Iyami, mm. or I don't want to be seen as the one that is speaking Yoruba because of peer pressure. Yeah. I want to be Tush. I want to be the one that has yeah. this good diction and good accent. Yeah. And I think it's extremely important because I also face that um, my kids are always coming up with business ideas and I said they should call it Odigye and they said, why? I said, because Odigye is your name. And they couldn't understand it. Mm. They said, it's not, the name doesn't sound Tush. It doesn't sound interesting. So I had to break down I said, Mercedes is somebody's name. I said, uh, Valentino is somebody's name. So all these big, like the names you, Ford is somebody's name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, it doesn't, it, you, do you think uh, Mercedes is, is not even, uh, like yeah. Ferragamo is somebody's name. It doesn't sound not interesting. We learn how to pronounce Family it. name. I'm like, we, we learn that person, they will learn how to pronounce Odige. The business name is Odige. Oh, I don't like being Osapola. I was like, Osapola, what I want, what I want to tease him. I will say, call Osapola for me. He will do like if you don't hear. I say, Osapola, come here. Because it just makes me feel like, oh, what would you call? My name is Daniel. Don't call me Osapola. I'm like, but Osapola is a powerful name. That's your name, Osapola, come here. So I think that as, as parents, we have a major assignment, especially if we're raising children that are still like 18 and below. Any, anybody 18 and below, you can so still make it, yeah, yeah. Still you can still mold and use it. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you feel like they are much older, I had a, my daddy had a conversation with me. It was last year, December. He sat me down. I, I came to talk to you. Like, he drove to my house and sat, <laughs> said, he, has, he wants to sit down and talk to me. My mom wanted to come and say, no, 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 it's not for you. And he sat me down and said that, ah, that I raised you very well, but that your children, I don't like it. They're not doing any house chores. That was like, my dad came to have that meeting with me last year. And I'm not, I'm an adult. But he is my parent. So even grandparents can bring in their influence to say, see, my, my daughter, my son, yeah. what you are doing, this is not good. Why don't you train? So let and everybody take ownership. We always ask if we know better than them. We, 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 I took response. Yeah. We did. We so did. You, but we, many of us, we argue with them. Like that. That. That that was was that. We don't you know, do that anymore. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, go, yeah. let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. BC Communications, Nigeria's leading independent broadcast company, has been officially designated as a great place to work. Over the past three years, we have transformed our workplace into one which is respectful, caring, rewarding, and provides great benefits to all our 500 employees. We thank our team for giving us the chance to show that partnership between employer and employee really works. TVC Communications officially designated as a great place to work and now the only broadcasting and media company not just in Nigeria but throughout continental Africa to be fully certified. TVC Communications, a great Nigerian company, a great Nigerian place to work. Welcome to Pure Entertainment. What would you like to order from our menu today? We have the regular. So let me go and put my jam. So <laughs> my 220 was 320. <laughs> I suppose don't be one metal. Like, oh, no, you mean like <laughs> <with your phone. laughs> At this point, I contest my jam. I, 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 I want to close I, the show. I can go. I can, okay, that's I can all we like can Zia, take. I choose to can close the show here for that long. <laughs> okay, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, number one, unavailable by David on featuring Musa Kiss. <laughs> we also have today's chef special.
Yo, shine, 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 shiny, yeah. Uh. Say, recap done, and it's time for number one on the countdown. One of Nigeria's hottest artists right now, his name is Rema, and this one is called Charm. Kick it. Another. For dessert, and a beef of nightcap. We have the night time and online specials. I want to start the gym, yeah? But do you know one thing that's actually keeping me back? You should start the gym to get fat. Cricket. She <laughs> says. Thanks for staying with us. I have a caller holding Mr. Tunji from Abuja. Thanks for calling. You're live. Hello. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you? I'm the lady. Good morning. Um, Good morning. This particular topic today gladdens me so much. Go ahead. This is just because, although it is late, you can, you can never be too different when it comes to your language and your culture. Mm. You see, this particular idea of not only speaking our languages, doing everything, including education in our language, has been tied out in the research by the late Professor Basapo, who has been just a teacher, who took selected children from primary one to primary six using the Uruba language. And they turned out very, very well. That also informed me, carrying out a similar research in Lagos in 1987 in the University of Lagos is for my first degree. You see, when you speak your language, your, your, speaker, your language and carry out instructions or instruct them in your language, they tend to understand whatever you are teaching them much more easily than when you speak any foreign language. Unfortunately, like uh, so many of people, many of people sit down there, we have abandoned what it is, what it are. Just as Baba Lalu Adeko also said, the Bongo Bass King or Lunga King of his school, in one of his poems, we need to go back to our language. It is only when you raise your children in your yeah. language yeah. that you can raise morally upright children. Right. Unlike what we have in the society today, I hope this can be encouraged yeah. a bit more. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you're going so to I remember when I was speaking names for my children, mm -hmm. a guy allowed me, said, oh, yeah, pick whatever name you want. In fact, I had the names for the children um, during NYSE, the three names. Then later on, I added one. Because I was like, okay, the last one will now be Kene Chuku. Mm -hmm. My kids are still asking me, when is Kene coming? Are we still planning that this Kene will come from heaven? <laughs> Everybody has been waiting for Kene since. So, uh, I, and I insisted on local names because my parents didn't give me any English name. I am Obia Julu or Labisi Ubu. And I was known as Olabisi growing up because uh, my, that was the name my mom was calling me and then my father took it up, right? And when I write my name outside, people are like, any English name? I'm like, no, I don't have any English name. But the pressure got to me uh, when I was modeling and then we needed to just touch up the name a bit. And that's where the BC C came C in. It would have just been that Olabisi the way it is. And I was having a conversation with my daughter a few months back. I was like, ah, why don't we have English names? I said, no, because you're not an English person. <laughs> this is your identity. I said, ah, mommy, can I change any of the names? I said, no, please, because your names carry your destiny. And I broke it down with numerology for her. We did the calculations. I showed her, I see, this is the meaning of this number. This is the meaning of this number. This is, the meaning of, this is what your destiny is saying about this name. And you see that it's powerful. You must hold on to your name and your identity. Mm. So we need to start having some of these conversations with our young ones. When we are practicing speaking the language and being in our culture we should also tell them the benefits yeah. of sticking to 
our culture and sticking to the names that we give to them. So we had a lot of friends in the university who changed their local mm -hmm. names to English names because of pressure. They wanted yeah. to sound tush yeah. and everything. They didn't and, allow and, me and I'm and, happy and, for And I've publicly um, indicted my husband a trillion times because he... He will now continue to that him forever and ever. Because <laughs> he, he, all my children have English names. Mm -hmm. And I remember because I have exposure. I have, I have lived abroad. And when you go abroad, you, identify, you appreciate yours a bit more. Because mm -hmm. when you see other cultures, you realize that, okay, this is who I am. So I came home and, of course, I, I, I met my husband who just believes that. He, he, for, he just believed that. He had his own thinking. So all my children have English names. And I, was, and I kept telling him, okay, I don't want my child to have an English name. But he insisted. His father said, ah. Where is the Yoruba name? The father and I said, this is, this is the Yoruba name. He said, no problem, but that will be number two. But that English one must be number one. Mm -hmm. we all, my, my mother fought it. His father fought it. Everybody around us fought it. My husband mm -hmm. insisted. We know. His children are having these names. And now he has realized it. Because mm -hmm. in, in recent conversations, when we're trying to promote our language, it's like, Mura, you are very right. <laughs> you know, it was, I wasn't thinking. Because my mentality then the time, was very backward. Yeah. I, I'm, so I'm we're, we're getting information. Mm -hmm. So now that we are, we are having information, hopefully people can learn from our mistakes. And listen, it's more important for us to project what is ours because yeah. that gives us identity. Identity, identity is such an important um, aspect of growth and development of any nation. I think like this is said, it also affected me. Not because I have English name. I, my parents didn't give any of us <laughs> English name, but I grew up with a name that my grandmother gave me, which was Ibishomi. Mm. And I remember asking my mom then that what was the meaning? It means that you have many parents. At that time when I was born, there were aunties, uncles. There were too many people around to carry the baby. So transcending into primary school, I, re I discovered that People didn't know how to pronounce it. Mm. So it was I be some and they were bastardizing the name. Which and that should have been their like problem, it. not that yours. Have been their problem. Mm. So when I got into secondary school, I said, no, Damn I'm using Damlola. <laughs> <laughs> At a point, my dad maintained calling me, be show me, but I won't answer. Mm. I will hear, but I won't answer. So I made sure that they all came out of and that. And it's a pressure that caused that. Caused that for me because of the name. So it, it was for me, now I'm regretting it. Yeah. That I would have just been able to stand in a room and say, yes. be show me, Banire. And everybody and then, turn around. And now I have, we have like three or four Damlola Banires that we know each other yeah. that we're family. So <laughs> it's not like which one. Yeah, I would have stood out. I would have stood out. Yeah. Let me take this call from Yakub. Thanks for calling, Yakub. You're live. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so first time for the sound of the parents of this boy. Uh, it did a great job. It did a great job. In fact, it is a diamond on uh, some, all of us that uh, we always say just the panacea in this house. We thought it's a good thing. But today, it has been come to notice now that our dialect, dialect is more, more important than any other language. And there's been a Indian government, I'm, I'm very sure that some of the officials are listening to this program this morning. You know why? If Someone wants to sit and write exam today, especially why like, they will say math and English is very, very important. I will forget our dialect. Instead of that, say that if the Hebrew, the Hebrew language is very important for you to promote to another, another, a, a, a other classes. They say English and math. Where the English and math come from? The Yoruba should be there. Even you can add it to that two subject that Yoruba, English, and math is very, very important. If you don't get Stay out of this, the three out of the three. You are not going anywhere. You will see yeah. that our children will drastically change to their dialect. But I will say that, but how can you be see that? If, if, you see, if the important thing is this. If you see somebody they call Ori Ure, you imagine that kind of a word, Ori Ure. If you give a name to a child, you call a child Ori Ure. See, the, that, that very particular name will follow this very particular yeah. child everywhere. Yeah. You yeah. cannot reject that kind of a name. Anywhere you go, you, you put your name and now yeah. you now put Ori Ray. So, so I'm, just, I'm part of, of parents yeah. of this boy, this boy. I'm, I'm part happy. of them. Thank okay. you. Okay. So let's talk about trying to pronounce people's names well. So if I know that um, Nima is Nima Akasha Zibiri and maybe I pronounce Ashakat or something and she corrects me, I should make that effort. People don't apply themselves to learn how to pronounce, but you can pron pronounce Yves Saint Laurent. Trash nigga. Not, you trash nigga. Nigga. <laughs> but you cannot learn how to pronounce Odigye as Odigye. Mm. So it was just yesterday. My son was like, I don't get it. Every, I don't know where they get W from. The name does not have W, but every time they call me Odigwe, I don't know where, why they are putting W in my name. And I have complained about it, but they still, even the teachers, they're just like, Odigye, Odigwe, Odigwe. I'm like, Lack yeah. of let's effort. make the effort mm. to pronounce people's names right, because it also helps in 
um, it, it shows you respect and you, you, you respect yeah. the person they are co co um, calling. You can't see me and then you are calling me a different name. You, you, dis you disrespect Let me. Let me take this message from engineer Ajibola Tijani, PhD. Let me say that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Dear Murayo, <clears throat> if you want to enslave an individual, you can take away the identity, which is the language. This is the cruelty from slavery. Yeah. However, we ought to have corrected this ages ago because every language is vernacular in their immediate environment. We deprived many people of furthering their education and indirectly deprived our nation of people who could have contributed their own quota to rebuilding <coughs> our nation. Guess what? The national policy on education has a mother tongue as the language of instruction in elementary school, but we don't implement it. Imagine that. Mm. He says, if you talk to a man, now this is Nelson Mandela is quoting, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart. Mm. Now, that's Nelson Mandela. I was saying recently, I think it was Minister of, fin uh, Minister of Women Affairs, um, mm -hmm. Uju Kennedy, Dr. Mm -hmm. Uju Kennedy, was saying something, that women, uh, so I can't remember, so, to talk to women, yeah, to do something, quiet. keeping quiet. Mm. You know, and she was saying it, it went viral because people now criticized her and judged her. And I said, could it be a language problem? Mm. Because there's a way you're communicating, you're thinking in Igbo, you're thinking in Yoruba, mm -hmm. you're trying to advise your sister that, listen, you don't want problem in your home. Just, just, just keep quiet. There's a way you say it. But when you, when, when you I translate, translate it, in your head, in your head, you're saying so you're speak. advising them in, a, in a, you are trying to make them understand it. Mm. But when you now write that in English, it has a totally different meaning, and it makes it look as if you are Somebody saying women are subject are subjected yeah. to yeah. Their, the saving that other. So the point is, language is our identity. Yeah. And if you had said that in Igbo, it might have meant something totally different. Yeah. Different, different. It goes back to also one of the reasons why your view pigeon was created. Mm. Because the reason why we created that show specifically was because we, we realized that as a people, we are not communicating to certain groups of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. are not getting it. Yeah, like we are speaking every day, this baby grandma, eh, mm -hmm. they want to remove subsidy, and they want to bring in this, finance is leaving the country. Mm -hmm. They don't get it. Yeah. All they know is that Nigeria is bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can feel even simplify it, it in a language that they understand. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have an understanding. Even if it is um, social issues, marriage, slapping your husband, slapping your wife, slapping your children, these things break it down. I know it's not good to beat your children anymore. Mm -hmm. This is how I break it down in the mm -hmm. where they get it. Mm -hmm. Then we can begin to fix right. society and, yeah. and solve social issues. That's actually communication. So you know in other countries like um, uh, China and other, yeah. um, what, what do they call those countries? Those Middle East. Asia. Yeah, Asia. Middle East, Asian countries. Um, they are Modus operandi is that you must learn the language first mm. before anything. And they teach in their local language. And they have textbooks in their local language. They break down the mathematics and everything in their local language. And so when their people are ingeniously creating, they are mm. creating from a place of understanding the problems and the solutions that accompany yeah. it. Um, I've been to some African countries and I realized that uh, most of them speak their local language and English. If there's no sentence that they make without infusing their local, local language. language, there's no, you know, the pigeon we speak here actually gave us, gave us a way out, <laughs> right? So we now, a lot of us now diverted to the pigeon instead of getting the local language and then English. And their English comes out very clean and clear because they have their, because some of our local languages have very good sounds that also enhance the English language. And so for us to understand better, which is why I'm coming to the last caller, that the government also needs to do something. We need to agree and sit at the table to say, let's have some languages that will be standard for people to learn the mathematics, the sciences in those local languages so that it okay. will give us a broader and better understanding. Take Bashiru from Abuli Egba. Thanks for calling. You're live. Hello. Good morning. Go ahead, please. So, uh, the problem we are having about language is that we have believed that if anybody is speaking a uh, local language, that person has no, no a kind of uh, look down on the person to provide the classroom. If you start speaking a vernacular, these are the problems we find from the school. From the school, so the teachers and the government has a lot. Even down, down the house, the parents. 
I refuse to allow us to move this to government. I know mm. on this table, everybody, be let every small thing happen. Yes, if there's no water in your house, it's government. <laughs> if there's no air in your room, it's government. If there's a mosquito on your wall, it's government. I agree with you, and I know, I know if YK is here, YK says government did everything. But there's some times that we, as people, <laughs> must take responsibility. We, Mariah, all of us, are responsible for raising our children to speak our languages. Government can choose not to, 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 to teach my language in their school because in their, they're considering different factors. That like there's an Igbo child there, there's an adult child there, there's a child there. So they're, 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 they're considering different things. That's government's yes. business. Mm. But in my own house, in my four walls, mm. I must take that conscious effort to speak my language to my children. Yeah, but they, you know, know they can also it. help us. Oh, you know? they can. But I'm just saying that mm. in this but, case, yes, so look, we, we are, are the primary. So choose first. Yes, that we are the in this people. case, we are government. Because yes. you, your own father. We leave our families to say, oh, I'm becoming a rep. I'm becoming an House of Assembly mm. member. It's still mm. us. Yeah. So your father chose he to raise chose. He chose. He made it mandatory. You speak fluent good English. He made it mandatory. You speak fluent pidgin. You, pidgin you speak fluent Yoruba. Yoruba. Come on. He says that's your language. But there's a, there's a missing incentive why I believe some of our parents didn't enforce this. Yeah. Right? At the time they grew up, they still had their own identity. At the time we were growing up, it was more trendy to be... Um, what's it called? To be on the other side. Yeah. To be speak the colonialist. It must, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting the. Yes, I'm trying yeah, to get yeah, to the mindset now. And it was I'm more trendy. Yes. You were more recognized. It was more like a status yes. symbol yes. that you came to a place and yes. you spoke well and yes. you had an accent. You yes. know. So we diverted yes. because of where. Yes. Uh, uh, I wanted to what add. We, yes, what we wanted yes. to achieve as a people. And now, where I'm saying government also needs to play a role. Sometimes we may not know what is better. For us but if we have leaders who say this is where we are going we need to bring our identity back let me tell they you also help to me. hold us accountable because by day if you don't teach this child the child comes to school and fails this exam the child will repeat so everybody now sits up to do what is right everybody will work together here we as individuals and the government in their policies as well right. that's just let me what tell i'm saying you, yeah i agree with you but i remember also growing up where all this nonsense came from there were some families that had satellite dishes in their houses mm. we were doing local tv nigeria yeah. is what nigeria feeds you yeah just that the way you watch, that you watch mm -hmm. the culture our language tells by moonlight yes. tells that we see that is filtered through our system for us but a few people nigerians the human elites. beings the elites who have small cash yeah. got a big satellite Stop watching so foreign well. content mm. right now they had access so they're different from us that we're watching only NTA. Now, with that exposure, it makes them look ah, this one speaks different language. Mm. You know, what different kind of cartoon? Mm. Gradually, then there's pressure. So Somebody now bad. mistakenly goes to a different country. Well, there's a cable station called BSTV Multichoice. And let me bring them to Nigeria. Oh, there's a market in Nigeria. They now bring the whole station to Nigeria. Guess what? Those of us that have small cash, we now subscribe. Guess what? We're exposing our children mm. to a lifestyle we don't have access to. So we are developing the mind faster yes. than what it should have been. So we are also as equally guilty. But, but everybody's I, I, guilty. I think on that part, some of our parents, the way we talk about um, um, what's that word, courage, and we talk about um, enacting. I remember when my dad bought a dish, mm. and we watched a music channel, mm. and that was the end for two months. <laughs> because he would come home and buy VHS, he bought a relu, he bought a reshi, because he wanted us to learn the language. Mm. So sometimes, That's even nice. most of our parents were actually not so strong-footed. Yeah. They have been dissuaded. Yeah. Yeah. Because my father said, I'm using my money to buy, to subscribe on this satellite dish. Mm. Then you people are now watching music. <laughs> music. Uh, no, two months, he banned us. From there, we went back. They did not teach us. Yeah. So I think if we, it's that, um, what's it called? Is that... Um, if you know better, you do better. Let me so take, let me take Bumi. Thanks for calling Bumi. You're live. Yeah, good morning. 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 No more English in this house. We have to. We have to be speaking our other language. And my son was so annoyed. He said, "I don't have to speak. I don't have to just speak." And by the time he's trying to speak, he's speaking. At, sorry, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, he's speaking at this, he's talking in Igbo language. He's talking like my other said, What they they just say? That is one. Then two. I have a niece. When she was traveling to Canada about three years ago, she took me. She said, "Auntie, please, I need get a room." The book from Genesis 1 to Genesis 3. Because our children were about three years old. 
She said, I cannot get there and they will not understand that language. And you know, up to now, she's been there now for the past five, six years, and she's teaching them. She even speaks to them, even in Yoruba. They, they even go to their, their school in Canada. It's French. So it's very really important. And then the names we give our children, I don't know, maybe uh, is this pride or whatever that people want to be naming all these things. What, uh, your name, what is your name, Janet? What's your name? My, the name of my children are so important to me and my husband that we determine that that is the name we want to give them. My first child is Enijo Oluwa. You know the name of Enijo Oluwa? Yeah. My second child is Oluwa Nefiche. My third child is Ben Oluwa. We, that is the Oluwa. I will make them to understand that those names we are given to us by God and you must, even when you are outside the country, you must be able to be proud of that name. So that one is also very important. I can tell you, I have not gotten a grandchild. I already have a Yoruba name, and I'm going to give my grandchild. So that one, right. we have to be careful about Yoruba. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bumi. Thank you. Go ahead. I think that is also important that, aside from just giving name and giving language, we help them understand why we're doing what we're doing. Because we have people that would then relocate at some point to um, diaspora, and can choose to change their name. You can't hold them back. Yeah. Many Nigerians changed their name based on yeah. religion. They went from a Shubi to a and that was because they now got a meaning to why their name does not suit them anymore. Similarly, somebody can say, my name is no longer um, whatever it is. I'm now in but America. Today, I am changing my name to Bob or whatever, or TB. By the time they are adults, they can make their, their decisions. Yeah. So I'm saying that as we, as parents, we should also give, don't just explain the reason for doing what we're doing, because a lot of times we, we, we just say, this is it. The children of nowadays, they need to, you need to explain, ah, explain to them yeah. why you're doing what you're doing. We also, I, I think that we should, we, we're being so harsh on parents that did not give their children native name or teach their children their language <laughs> so far. Shan Let's wow. be kind. Why? <laughs> When you wake up, is your morning. You have woken up now. Let's start taking specific yep. steps to help build your children's identity but from also, this you know, moment. Another thing I learned from the parenting <laughs> course I took is the fact that we also must teach our children our stories, mm. share the stories of our, their fathers. The, your father was a king. Your great-grandfather was the oba of this. Mm. Share their your history. culture, their, their history. history. Because sometimes when they go to different countries, they learn about histories and they're unable to share theirs because all they know is what we, 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 they are taught in school. Yeah. But you have some indigenous, indigenous um, stories that were told to you, passed down, yeah. that you refuse to tell your children. It gives them identity. It gives them a sense of purpose. I think, I think this table today is for my father. <laughs> because I remember when you say, oh, we are from Ofi. Mm -hmm. We came from Ofin to um, uh, Agarawu. We Imagine. came from my own father came from Agarawu to the Banire Street in Odrelegba. Imagine um, that. Uncle father went from Agarawu to um, Mushi. Imagine then this that. Banire went from there. So, but sometimes it was boring to us. Yeah. <laughs> my dad in most does. Cases. In most cases, my dad should not see you idle. It's the time for story. And, <laughs> but now, speaking about this, it. I appreciate it because yeah. when people say, "Oh." Somebody had told me before that, oh, there's a banner in Nabi Okuta. I said, no, all of us are from Lagos Island. Yeah. <laughs> because that confidence had been instilled in me that it's just like you say, you find banner in Sokoto, Kilo Shembe. What's he doing yeah. there? Yeah. So everybody's from <laughs> one source. Shuku, you know, my bad. Yeah. So how, how do you get. So I, I, I think that. that I, my, 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 it's my, I my great grandfather, great great grandfather. Yeah. There were two brothers. One turned his name to Agbaje. Mm. And we, so the other one came to Lagos, and they're actually brothers. Oh, so everybody at Baje like related, but even the men of them don't know. I mean, I hope my family will not come in. But that, 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 that's the reality. These are stories yeah. that we are told. Let me take um, a caller then, and you're live, I believe. You're live, and you're live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this issue is a very practical issue that we need to really go to about it. The government has their own side, the implementing most are the ones that need to do a great job. Just like my name, Eniola. Some people call Eni. When you call Eni, I will answer you. <laughs> I will never answer you. You have to call that Eniola before I will answer you. Mm. So, you see, when you wake up in the morning, at a car, a car, a car, it goes a long way. I love uh, what Daniela said, that our father instilled that language into them. I love it. So let's do the same to instill into our children. So that the generation yeah. to come will have the Exactly. Thing. Thank you very Thank much, Janela. I'll come to you business in a second because I also have to remind our viewers, you know, many people have tried to... Your view is a show that, I, that is very dear to my heart. And it's because the reason why the show was created is because it's a purposeful show.
Mm. People have tried to do different things and different ways. And yes, they get their numbers, they get their viewers, but this show would always be sustained because it, the, 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 the foundation of it mm. is true and is, and is real. The reason why we have different ladies from different backgrounds is to bring the richness in our experiences. You have a Hausa person, you have, I'm bringing in that there's a new Amaka is coming as Ibo, we're having some from the corner, we have Mariam who is middle belt, we have you, we South have South. Abiyajulu, we have, um, we have Nima, we have... The idea really was to bring different women from different experiences and backgrounds. Where all the knowledge, all your stories, all your identity, bring it to this table and express your thoughts and views based on what's going on. Mm. And that's why the show is rich. Mm. And that, that's a beauty. In originality. In originality. So, yeah. it's the, it's the, it's, and that's, people don't understand what they see in this show. But why do you just like the show? It's because mm. you're getting Everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah. We're not both speaking accents and trying to be all foreign, <laughs> foreign trained, <laughs> trying to speak a certain way. We don't, don't have that time. We don't, we don't talk over people's heads. Mm. We are Nigerians. Mm. Mm. And we are communicating to Nigerians. What yes. no, so, that's all, so that's why that, I, mean, I get really passionate because yeah. it's the core of what the show is about. Mm. Passion. Like, I feel the passion. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So I remember a few back to our topic. A few uh, years ago when my son was in primary school and they asked them where they came from. And my son said he came from uh, Alakoko. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher called well, me. Call me and said, ah, ah, where are you people from? I said, ah, we're from Delta State. He said, your son does not know where he's from. Oh. He's telling us he came from Alakoko. When the quiz my quiz, he said, Oshodi. Hey! <laughs> How did you get there? Oshodi. Oh, yeah, so I had to, when they came home, mm. I now took it upon myself to start explaining and explaining. But I think I've, I've not still done a very good job. Mm. And I love the conversation we're having here. Once yeah. I get home today, I'm going mm. to make some yeah, things. Yes. yes. They're all going home. Make some Fix things. Um, um, mandatory? Mandatory in the house. And I know that my son, because I've tried it sometime before, um, my son was revolting back to back, back to back. He doesn't like languages. I don't know why. He struggles with languages. But I'm going to insist that we're going to get this and get this and get this, or this reward and this reward will not come. And let me see how I'm able to be consistent. Mm. Because also about you, if you're, yeah. it's something you're not used to, mm. I speak uh, English and pidgin with my yeah. husband at home. Because he doesn't understand my language, I don't understand his language. But the kids will pick it up. The, the kids will pick up the pigeon eventually. Yes, 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 they do. So let me let me let me take engineer Kudayo. Thanks for calling. You're live. Yeah. Good morning, Good morning. Yeah. Uh, this topic is is actually affecting me. Um, as as it is now, eh, I cannot read a Yoruba text. You know, and it's not good for me because my children are growing up. Now I have a ten-year-old boy that keeps. Reminding me that I should speak Yoruba to him. Nice I cannot converse in Yoruba with him fluently. Wow. You know, I know that. You see, so, and uh, <laughs> this topic actually, was, as you were discussing it, it was actually affecting me somehow. It makes me look back mm. on my exposure in my early life. You know, and I think that uh, it is a reawakening for the African man. Yeah. Some years ago, you know, Pella released the record. He said that uh, he was trying to say that you cannot express yourself in English. And he said that in that record, he said, uh, translate Oyi Musimi in English. <laughs> and he said it's almost impossible. So this is something that we, could, we, we should do and invite. Now, out of the three, three tribes in Nigeria. I'm trying to. You know, because <laughs> you can't hear me. You can hear you. I'm uh, trying so to translate Oyi Musimi. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the three tribes in Nigeria, I can say that the Yoruba, they are backward in, you know, in speaking their languages. If you meet a, two, two Igbo people speaking, conversing somehow, they will speak their... their, Thank their, you, their... Let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me stay on what the engineer could say, because when you go abroad... There's, a, well, there's, there's I don't want to generalize, mm -hmm. but there's a possibility there, that the Igbo family are likely to retain their yeah. language compared to the Yoruba families. Yoruba the Northerners, phew, those ones don't even try English. <laughs> they, they raise their children in their language even till today. Yeah. So it's the Yorubas that go travel out and now want to be foreign. I, for, for my own experiences, so I be wrong. Exposed. So they, so they I, totally I we, we are, refuse Yoruba's to... Yoruba's assimilated, assimilate um, the culture of where we've they assimilated, reside. Yes, we've assimilated culture very, very easily. I also think that we're negatively judging the entire Yoruba by Lagos. Because you, if you are You're talking about those that travel, over. yes, I'm, I'm, like we're, we're yeah. still judging the abroad. entire Yoruba by Lagos mm -hmm. State. Um, if you're not talking about the Jehovah person that traveled or the Wumosh person that traveled or the Egba person that traveled, so it's 
also depends on where you are coming from. The Lagos Yoruba person is very liberal, and many Yoruba people are also liberal, liberal in mind. So we assimilate. Let me get somewhere. Oh, we, we, we blend into Blending, the system. Yeah. And it's a strength and it can be a weakness. That's why awareness is very important. So that when you understand, when you're aware, you're able to pick it up. But what that question they asked about, say that Onyimu in, in English was a, very, a major one. And they say that even if you're trying okay, to understand... Mm, how can you say it? <laughs> well, when you're trying to understand even the Bible, understand your religion, it is richer because the interpretations from you, there are words you say, you're about that. You so can't have you tried praying it. Yes, in you, your local language? That's because our first language is our local language. Hey! And yeah, prayers language go like this. Yeah. My children are lost when they seem to pray in Yoruba because they don't even understand. Yeah, I'm also lost. I never, I never get it. If your first language is so important, we can, we, you, you can retrace it. What I'm saying is there's redemption. There's hope. Mm, even if you're us, see, there is hope. I'll, I'll even if you're 30, there's hope. There's hope. Even yeah. your children are already... Just, yeah. just, there's hope. Wake up today and start working on it. I'd like to talk about sustainability because if you look at the new modern generation TV today, there is no sustainable children language program. Mm. If the adults are not available, you should leave them to something to learn. To I remember, like uh, Mariah mentioned, the Tales by Moonlight. I think on uh, one but of that the was done in English. I, I think on one of the channels we had Aloy Yada mm. okay. for the Yorubas. But I've, 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 I did a, um, I did a research on um, children programs because I wanted to bring in one. And I noticed that even Dr. Tunji Bamishi being had one story time and all ah. of that. But they don't survive. Mm. So I was asking a friend of mine in PR and he says, there's nobody to fund anything that has to do with children, yeah. really. So it comes down to sustainability. If there is even one TV station who is saying that, okay, instead of our cartoons that we engage children with should be in, um, English. It can come in your local dialect from this hour to this hour, yeah. Europe, this hour to this hour. So, like they are doing, so, some, of, some people are bringing it up yeah. now, but it's not still popular. So, Dami, I, I agree with you 100%, but I don't want us, for me, it's still a bit too far fetched. I agree with you. Yeah, government has the points, but government, they, should, they should have situation whereby TV stations can show, just like we are also showing your VPG and everything. However, we must force ourselves to start it from home. I love the fact that you and I, all of us, grew up in the same Lagos, and you speak three languages, and I'm here speaking only one language. <laughs> you know, so the idea is that even within our small circles, we can start changing it. So government will do their own part. Now, that's it, as I said, that other factors are involved because you have to know which language, which one are we going to pick. Yeah, yeah, but there's over 500 languages mm, in this yes, country. Yes, but her angle now is yes. not just on the government. Yes. We have people that are content producers. Content producers. They mm -hmm. can begin to work towards this. And trust me, right now, there's a market for it. Yes. Because people are beginning to realize. realize but we are now waiting for who's the first person that will start. Mm, we're not relying on YouTube. Yeah, no, who's the first person to start? Where would I get the funding from? Mm. Will people accept it? That's, that's the question a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. But the people that will do the okay, sacrifice so I guess of sustainability. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I, have a, I have a Yoruba lesson teacher. It, okay. She does it virtually. Okay. I met her while I, I was in America. Yeah. Like, I, I was I in America in a friend's so house. Sorry. This oh. person has been holding for a while. Larry, oh, Larry, why do you thanks for calling your live? Thank you, Mary. Mm. it fully. Larry, right? Thank you. <laughs> Why in that? <laughs> you, 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 see, you see, this issue to me, it looks somehow because we are in an environment that people don't really understand the value of such things. For instance, for me, I gave my children both English and Yoruba names. The Yoruba names are so deep that people don't know how to pronounce it. So I just give them the English name. <laughs> so let, let, them, let people call the English name. But you know what? In my house, 80% of our discussion is in Yoruba. My children are less than 10 years, and they can read you by more than people who are over 30 years. Aww. So we speak more of Yoruba in the house. Mm. Even when outside, this, we speak more of Yoruba, and the people will be looking at her. No, that is what I want. They go to school. Let them teach them English in school. And even in school, they do Yoruba. Then the second part, you see, this language, in all our languages, my project when I was doing my BSc, was on this topic. And I did one of the research that Professor Tashulai did in the 70s. There was a section in the University of uh, Ife or Ibadan, I've forgotten. And they had take five students, they taught them in Aousa, Igbo, and Yoruba. And they taught the other set in English. At the end of the term, at the end of the semester, those who were taught in local languages, in our indigenous language, passed better than those in English. And we have all of these things, all the methods, science uh, terms, they are all in our local dialect. I did a research and I have the right. material for it. We have to so please, very much let's... Larry, 
Yes. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up. But I think in a nutshell, really, I think where your morning is, I mean, whenever you wake up, that's your morning. That's your morning. So, that's yes, some of us do not start early, but some of us are trying to fix it. So, please, wherever you are, no matter how old your children are, I think we can start teaching our children our languages because it gives them real identity, especially in this global village where everybody is all, where everything has been merged. But when they have their identity, they're able to stand out on their own and be able to make uh, constructive um, um, developments to their individual nations wherever they reside. Let's go on a short break now. When we come back, we're bringing our special guest for today. Stay with us. We're celebrating International Women's Month and we are having women from all over the world come on your view this month to celebrate the month with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Made Kuti <laughs> in the view. <laughs> <laughs> it's still 7 of 7 and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry placard. It's about 5 or 7 to be honest because ask your question. I have so much to speak about once we finish. We'll not give you the time because it's 7 of 7. I will make the time now. <laughs> he said he will not ask questions about science. No, 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 neuroplasticity. No, no, no. I'm based on... He asked a question that was subjective <laughs> about high life. No. And he did not finalize his answer about a kuti question where there are only three of us. Editor, scratch this part out. That could out. have possibly <laughs> composed the music. Editor, scratch this part out. Stupidity <laughs> is an act of ignorance. Oh, hey God. Madi. <laughs> was composed... By which Kuti? Femi Kuti. Is that a father answer? God, I'm Shimon Kuti. No, wait, wait, Femi Kuti. You said Femi Kuti. Kuti. Wait, wait, wait. It can't be allowed. No, no you've you not can't asked me anything. Everyone. You've not asked me anything. We, we, uh, so, my final answer. No. <laughs> All I have to say is yeah. this show is really about drinking. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The questions don't matter. <laughs> That's the whole Just idea. Justice is out the window. <laughs> we throw caution to We have no right morals here. here. On the 7 of 7. <laughs> questions or coming. I may not even ask questions. I may just... I may even tell you I saw this. What if, what if it's in person, mm -hmm. but then... Would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you people can't just be on third language. <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, babe, I cannot do it again. And you lose range. <laughs> so, what would change, what would change the scenario for, like, does it matter where? Do you want to have like a fancy dinner yeah, like the film you were meant no, 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 to be talking like about? No, 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 like funny or be Or do you want to be on the street? No, carry me. Don't fancy dinner. Or even just on the road for treadmill. <laughs> 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 or you're not a joke. <laughs> you don't you, you're not a joke. 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 In person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. Yes. That's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving? No, no, the car point? will be stationary. Pray I'm not the, the one driving. The car will be stationary. Because I'll go, I'll go mass up. If you can't be told me like me, I'm going to drive near water where we are. Only with all of us. You can't see that. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first! Woo! OJ right here, 7 of 7, like you already know. Benga right here, 7 of 7, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So in celebrating International Women's Month, we have a skilled consultant, an entrepreneur, author, speaker, and advocate with 20 plus years 
job incomes and economic growth. Mm -hmm. She truly believes in the transformative power of education in achieving other sustainable development goals. Welcome with us, Olari Waju Oniito, to the show. Thank you for having me. Good to have you. Our first International Women's Month, you know. Oh, yes, so we're really that's good. Excited to have you on. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. Before you go into your career, what you do, this thing that we talked about earlier, language. What are your thoughts on this issue of language? <laughs> so I was so excited hearing you ladies talking about language and. Uh, for me, language is really, really critical. And um, coming from Kwara State, where they tell us that we are confused, <laughs> whether we speak Hausa or Yoruba, um, it's important for you to know where you're from and to be enshrined in your culture. Yeah. So um, language for me is critical. It gives you identity. It helps you to communicate. It also grounds you in your culture. So yeah. it helps you to really broaden your perspective. Yeah on how you appreciate things so yeah. i really do agree that we should uh teach our children, teach our children. but i'm also guilty oh yeah i wanted to go there <laughs> <laughs> so i'm not guilty so my kids so i tell people that their children that do not have an ear for languages yes I know. and I know. you know you know, sometimes if you understand education, sometimes it might, it might be maybe that they're dyslectic and they don't pick certain languages and so it might not be the fault of the parents. You also need to try and understand your child, mm -hmm. even though we're trying to get them to understand the mm -hmm. language. It's also good to understand and put an extra effort so that they can pick up yeah. your language. Because okay. French, English, they are doing a lot of things in school. Mm -hmm. English, French, Yoruba, and when the child speaks? sometimes might just <laughs> mix. Have you had yeah. children that speak a sentence, there's English, Yoruba, Hausa, and English, easier. because of... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, let, yeah. Let's talk about um, your career. Um, you know, you're doing so many things. Your education is core for you. How did you get into this uh, line of business that you do? Okay, so because I wear so many hats, I, I, I tend to explain to people that I'm a change agent <laughs> that has a deep uh, passion for creating jobs, wealth, income, and economic growth. Um, but I, all that I do is rooted in the power of education. Um, I express myself through my consulting business, Holistic Business Solutions, where I work as a business consultant. Um, but I also run a non-profit organization called SEED. Um, and SEED is Sustainable Education and Enterprise Development. And that is because of my passion for education. Um, but I also, like I said, um, I express myself, I sit yeah. on the board of a microfinance bank, yeah. and I do a lot of things around business, but my core passion is yeah. in education. education. And it is because um, I tell people education saved my life. Mm. <laughs> uh, if you put it that way, I lost my mom when I was 10. Mm. And one of the things my mom was 100% about, apart from languages, because she loves Yoruba as well, is that all her children must go to school. Because mm. she didn't go to university, she had 11 children. And she was wow. the first girl. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> that was a real uh, task. But the truth is, in terms of education, for me, it is really, really, really critical. Okay. And when so, I started my non-profit, uh, yeah. Okay, let me, let, me, let me come, let me just, because you're talking about education, you finished with first class, as in. <laughs> I know, yeah. You that you look at. Oh, well, if it goes. As in. As in if it goes. Just read, read, read. Well, first you. class, then you now went to do your postgraduate, finish with distinction. You alone. So um, there's a misconception that, oh, those that did first class, they are, they are so um, um, bookish. But you have also displayed in your CV that you do, it's not just about the books. Yeah. There are other things. You have a, a, this holistic life. Can you break down how you were in school and were you, were you extremely bookish or it was just a natural thing for you and how you've been able to now balance it by having a more holistic yeah. um, so life? I, I tell people that I'm not, the typical, I'm not the typical first class student. So I had people in uni that could bet that I was going to finish with the third class. Mm. That's how much I was in town. <laughs> <laughs> so people that I know in my department are like, Larry. How? Larry is a tall girl now. How? Which book? Eh. I, mean, third, I mean, if they give her third class, they even dash her. Eh. You know, so, but it's, um, it's really, I tell people it's about strategy. Mm. It's about understanding because I told you I lost my mom when I was 10 and mm. education saved my life. So I had to leave a big private school to go to a missionary school in Ibadan because mm. my mom was the one that was really, you know, sending us to big private school. My dad was about 
through me, I don't know about this big, big private school. <laughs> money. So my dad wanted me to go to Model College, all those yeah. colleges. But my mom put us in a big private school. And when she, she, she died, I had to go to a missionary school in Ibadan. And for me, it was, I need to get a job when I'm finished with university. What is this first class thing? Because those days, remember those stories when they talked about, you know, when you finish school, if you finish with the first class, yeah. employers yeah. would be waiting at the table. Yeah. So for me, it was, what is this first class? How do you get it? And I learned about the GPA system. So for me, first class for me was strategy. Because I had C's. You for me, I calculate it. my GP every mm. semester. Mm. And I simulate my result in school. I, I knew how to use Excel. So I would simulate my result every term. In this course, I'll get C. Mm -hmm. I went to Babcock University. We're doing Christian courses. All my Christian courses were C's because they were based on... Uh, Bible. You know, Babcock is a Seventh-day Adventist. So the, the, the curriculum, yeah. So, the, so I just pass it. Don't fail. I had C's in a Greek in some other courses because they were one unit, two unit courses mm. and I understood how to get a first class. So you picked your I battles. picked my battles wow. mm. and I ensured that all of those battles I got A's. Mm. And exactly, I went this, they were like, oh, you did it in Babcock. Babcock is a private school. I did it in Unilag again and I'm the first mm. distinction in that department wow. since it started in the 1960s. So it's really, it's about, I tell people you can be brilliant but you can still fail mm. because you can say I know more than my lecturer. I still feel I miss the mark. Yeah, so fantastic. Love that. I think for me, I, I, the, the connotation in terms of education is calm because somehow I think I'm passionate about the girl child and the things that we consume these days. And I also owe it to the fact that I think a, a lot of women are still not coming out to give their success stories mm. from the angle of education. It feels that when you see that big name, oh, she must have gotten there somehow. It, it mm. could have been a crooked way. Oh, it's wrong. So she had somebody. Awesome. So if you do not have somebody or have mm. nobody, how can you really put your head down in education and still maintain, because you mentioned, you said I was in town, yeah. and still maintain being in town. Mm. Like my people say, my baby, my baby, my baby. Mm. So you want to get a distinction in education and you also want to be in town. So how can women of nowadays, talking about the International Women's Month, how can we juggle? What are we supposed to do right mm. to at least get our acts together? And I'm happy you mentioned this. I remember when, just recently on LinkedIn, a few months ago, Unilag had their convocation. And there were, you know, I think you had one of them on your show, mm, the lady yes. that finished uh, her PhD. The oh, yes, PhD. yes, yes, yes. And I was on my LinkedIn page talking about it and saying, please, let's stop talking and saying education is a scam. It is not. We need to promote excellence mm. in everything. Excellence in education, excellence in your career, excellence in doing whatever you're doing. And that is what I take into my career. When I was working, my first job was in KPMG. I got a double promotion because I stuck to what I was doing and I was able to balance. Even in, in the office, they're like, oh, when there's a party, they call Larry because ah, Larry is the one in town. Like and they're the like, party. Ah, how do you correlate this person with this person yeah. that, you know, yeah. but you can have that but I, I say find your rhythm. I don't like to call it balance, but you can yeah. find your rhythm because there's no true... No balance. <laughs> so I, 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 balance. Love, I, love, I love what you're saying and I yes. love your personality because sometimes we like to put people in a box. Mm. If you are a first class uh, graduate, you should act a certain way. You mm. should be a certain way. You should speak a certain way. If you are like the third class and the past and maybe two, two, this is your life. Yeah. This is how it should be. But you are a living example yeah. of you can be this... And you can be that, and I like it. So let's go to your books. You are also an author. Yes. So um, you have a couple of books, which uh, I think one of them is dealing with um, children and entrepreneurship. How did you decide to write books, especially for children? Okay, so that's a, a, a good story. So I'm a woman. So she was like, Yoloja, yeah. Lagos Island. I used to sit right. on top of money. Kind wow. of. Yeah. 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 So my mom had two shops in Alade, two shops in Tedu Show, two shops yeah. in the oh, island. Uh -huh. cool. She was Yoloja somebody, I'm daughter of a businesswoman. Yeah. And so that's like why cool. I decided to go to university to study business. Mm. And I grew up being entrepreneurial. It was natural to me. Even in school, while doing all of those things, I ran about four businesses. Wow. So by the time I had my girls and I was like, I need to teach these children how to do business. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for books um, that they can read about businesses and all the books I saw were international books, dog walking, snow packing, babysitting, <laughs> Borishi Rishi, and I'm like, what is this? Oh, Don't do this thing in Nigeria now. <laughs> you know? So I started creating worksheets, you know, to be able to put them through and, you know, get them, you know, yeah. 
understanding the concept yes. of business. And one day I looked at all of the resources. A friend came and she saw it. She was like, Lion, why are you keeping all these things to yourself? This is your book now. And I decided that, okay, you know what? Let's put this into a book, book. and then share yes. this with others. And that's how Minipreneur was born. And my kids started their business at age seven. Wow. Um, and just like me, they have the non-profit mindset. The idea of their business then was to, you know, raise funding to send other less privileged children to school. So they ran their businesses before they went to boarding school for secondary school. They ran their businesses throughout uh, primary school and they raised funding. And we used that book as well to get other children into entrepreneurship. In fact, the book was used as a textbook to test teaching entrepreneurship in schools. No, I didn't pick it. Yeah, yeah, to process. teach, you know, children in schools yeah. about entrepreneurship. So we turned it into a mini curriculum that you can even Fantastic. use in the classroom. Tell, a, tell, a, tell us about SEED. What, what, how did you come about SEED and what exactly is the objective and purpose of SEED? SEED is very, very dear to me, right? Um, so when I wanted to... When I started my firm, so I, I resigned from KPMG in 2007, I started my own firm, um, I wanted to find something to do to give back, so we started CSR, and of course I told you I'm passionate about education, education saved my life. Yeah. Um, and I started trying to work, you know, typically when you want to do CSR, it's public school you want to go to, I want to help the less privileged. Um, and then one year, UK Aid, which is, the, which is now FCDO from uh, the UK, they did a, a study and they invited some of, our some of us as consultants to show us schools in Lagos that served children from low-income oh, backgrounds, yes. but they were private schools. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us know them. They are like all these schools, you see all these small children yes. going. What is house? What is the The share number, we didn't know. So in Lagos State, we have about 1,700 public schools but we have about 20,000 private schools. Yes. Now, out of this 20,000, only about 5,000 are registered with the ministry. Yeah. The remaining about 15,000 yeah. are these low fee private schools that yeah. pay as low as 15 hours per day. Yeah. And these schools serve almost 70% of the low-income population in Lagos. And I was like, what is going on yeah. here? And I was like, no, this is a lie. Until they took me on a field trip. I mean, yeah. go man. Somebody's in my own state, yeah. came to show me Ew, what was the schools in, in my own I mean, I was crying. I, was, I mean, everybody on that trip was like, what's going on? We were all crying. I was this like, bad. is it this bad? Like, mm. every place. And when people were like, oh, no, they're only in certain places. Every single local government in Lagos State has these schools. Mm. And I see, we work with about 715 of those schools in Lagos. And I see it every single day. Mm. But the challenge we have is a challenge of ideology. So because they are private, nobody yeah. helps. Mm. So SEED was born to be able to support the low-fee private schools that yeah. serve children from low-income households. Fantastic. I've always actually advocated for that because I've always I've worked with the Ministry of Education and I saw this data and I realized that those guys need help because they, they say they have private schools, but they're, they're private schools, but they're low-income, so they need a lot of support. So what, tell, tell us a bit of the success stories you've done with these schools. What have you done? In, because they have, they, they have issues with teachers. Even regulation is a problem because you can, you can go to those kind of schools and their toilets are bad yeah, because nobody's checking them. Yeah. So tell go, what what are some of your success stories? I'm so excited. Those. I know that you understand me based <laughs> on the angle you've come in. So as SEED, we, do, we provide a holistic solution. Mm. And we work with these schools to be able to improve their quality. So what we say is that when you say a school is not of good quality, the school owner has no clue what you're talking about. Quality to a lot of people is, oh, they are building, they have toilets. They have okay. Okay. So one That's of the first things SEED did was to dimension the word quality into... 86 indicators. Mm. So we have a tool called the seed quality assessment tool that helps the school. So it's like a, you know, when you do a personality test, yeah. and you're like you are a flag or you are whatever. We created that tool in a way that a school assesses themselves. They, we use the traffic light system where they know that, oh, on this indicator, I'm red. On this indicator, I'm green. Okay. And they're able to understand how to move because yeah. the idea is I'm bad. So what? How do I change my situation? Yeah. And so that's how we're working with the schools to ensure that they are able to understand the concept of quality. And then we also work around regulation mm. because the ministry, so we partner with the ministry to understand the sector. A lot of people don't even understand the space. Mm. So one of the things is we, we take 
information to the ministry. We help them to understand the sector. We advocate because, I mean, as much as I'm as friends with them, I also come up with yeah. the issues. So, for instance, there are certain policies they bring out that they are thinking of the big private schools. And they say all private schools. And mm. then they start to come to these low-fee private schools. And then they're like... It's not, well, it's, not, it's not working. Yeah. These schools are almost at the same place with the public schools. Yeah. And so when you come up with a policy, you also need to be able to understand yeah. all of that. And then we provide trainings, we provide support to these schools. And uh, like I said, we've worked with over 715 schools in the 6th education district of Lagos. Uh, we've, gotten, uh, we've helped some of our schools to eventually get approved by Lagos wow. State Government. Wow. We work on access to finance. We've partnered with LSCTF. Yeah, with about seven financial institutions to support the schools because a lot of the indicators some they can do by themselves some they can they do with the money course. they have but there's some there's some indicators that they need access to finance just read <laughs> so, um, so the, that's I, I feel that you know i feel like we should i should dig into this education work but you are also a plant mom and mom ah. is not on the show to talk about the green <laughs> secular economy <laughs> the importance of having plants and so i help think it's so important as women because hmm, if a woman underst when a woman is healthy, when a mother is healthy, the entire family is healthy. Mm -hmm. when, a mo when a mother or a woman becomes aware, the entire family becomes aware. aware. So I want you to make us more aware. It's the month we're celebrating you as a woman <laughs> about why being a plant mom, what are the advantages and all those, all good those stuff. Things. Okay, so I'm going to split this into two conversations. <laughs> There's being a, 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 a plant mom as someone that, you know, that it collects plants and green and ensuring that you have a green environment. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the, 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 the plant mom that grows herbs mm. okay. for the kitchen. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. I like yeah? that one. So, I mean, I'll start with the other side, which is, you know, ensuring that you understand that climate change is real. Um, I, I wasn't 100% a plant person until COVID. So this mm. whole plant thing started yeah, in 2020 yeah. for me. And even though my husband is a plant person, he loves trees, he cannot go into any space. Whether rented, he would take permission to plant a tree. Mm. So he grew up, you know, having trees mm. around him. So we would normally plant trees, but I started collecting plants during COVID. And I started with herbs. And I was introduced to herbs because at that point, everybody, everybody was, was running was into land. <laughs> Let's find oh, something. Nice. Um, so I started growing herbs. And for me, it wasn't even for anything. It was more of... I, was, I needed my brain to work. Um, I'm a consultant. At that point, yeah. everybody was sitting at my home. I needed an activity to do. So I started growing herbs and using it in my kitchen. And I found it valuable because then I had time. I had, uh, um, I had oregano. <laughs> I had uh, rosemary. rosemary. I had all. In fact, rosemary, I would put it under my pillow to sleep well because at yeah. that point, I was having serious yeah. migraines. So, you, you know, I saw the wonders wow. of herbs during covid wow. and i was able to i mean i still continue growing herbs but for plants as someone that juggles so much mm. work that i do in all of the things that i do coming home to plant i tell you when i get to my gate mm. the air mm. is different are you for real as in it is fresh it is re i mean i don't know how to even my so i also have That's dogs i have four dogs my dogs sit under my because they know oh, that the, it's sense different. of freshness it's freshness then in the mornings before i go out i have tea in the garden i'm not on but the truth is i now see why when you sit down inside <laughs> the garden <laughs> because that first that early morning freshness, freshness with the plants mm. some plants you know they take Absorb. in your carbon dioxide and yeah. give you oxygen yeah. so mm. for you to be so it gives you that and then your mental health you are just calm yeah, nice. You know, the space just. Yeah. We have tiled, 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 tiled all our compound. There's no space. No, no, cement, no. cement, cement everywhere. How you do we I do, not, no. I do not actually have. I don't plant in the ground. So I, I, I pots. do pots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have no and it doesn't have to be yeah, extensive. So it doesn't have to be fine, fine pots. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, so for, your, for the record, I have over 250 plants. Yeah, I needed to In pots. Yes. So she has over 250 pots. And that house, house is a forest. Like, <laughs> <Just house. laughs> it's actually a jungle, yeah. So it's an yeah. urban jungle. I call my house an urban You're jungle. You're kidding me. At the backyard? 
Bye. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. so in my estate, we we are like the environmental champion. Mm -hmm. Kidding me? I, I plant trees on, on my husband's birthday. We planted trees. I give out trees during COVID. Mm -hmm. I, everybody's house that. Wow. Was, <laughs> Interesting. Know. I called the gardener just <laughs> yesterday to go to my house and see what we could do because I was planning to have a garden also mm -hmm. and have a nice place to relax. So yeah. I guess I'm in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, because yeah. of time, let, 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 what's next for you? I mean, we're celebrating women and we're happy. You're doing so many things, um, so many things, and we're proud of you. What's next? Is that you still going to just be um, doing more of this your consultancy work, or is there a new big thing that we should be expecting from you? Oh, the, um, seed is the next big thing yeah. because I just uh, I'm in a phase in my career. I turned forty two years ago, ah. and my decade, my forties decade, mm -hmm. has been dedicated to focusing on education. Yeah, um, it's my time to give back, mm -hmm. and for me, what I see is in the by. By the time I'm 50, I want to have impacted over 20,000 schools and mm. 1 million children. That's awesome. Wow. That's um, and that's, and that's what, that's what is, that, that's the goal. That's the North Star mm. till I'm 50. <laughs> and if I achieve it before 50, then maybe then something you're going to upgrade. Yeah, so <laughs> something oh, yes. What's your typical day like? Mm. Uh, tell us. Okay, so my typical day has probably been planned four weeks ago because my schedule gets <laughs> filled by different things. But my typical day starts with, um, of course, the guarding. <laughs> I guess because just for my head to, yeah. to get clear. And then, you know, um, I go to, I mean, I get to work. I actually live outside Lagos. Mm -hmm. So I get to commute. Okay. to work. I have wow. little kids I have to take So my of. twins are in boarding school okay. because of, I you mean, you finish it. <laughs> so that's why you have to have a garden now. That's all that yeah. Yeah. You can't be doing garden work when you're carrying so, carry so much. Yeah. So that's, that's, why, that's why there's time and season. Yeah. So at some point, I, I was almost like a full housewife. Yes. I had to give up a give lot to time, be able yeah. to be home with them. Mm. And like I tell you, my, my kids, they did year six. They didn't skip anything. Mm. They, they were almost uh, 12 before they got into GS1. Yes, they okay. were trained. I mean, I'm, I was comfortable yeah. putting them in boarding right. school. Mm. And they were ready. Uh, they were mature. They were, they were, they were, they were mature. So at, at this new season, I'm happy to really focus. So what do you do for self-care? What do I do for self-care? Self yeah. Oh, I love dancing. You like dancing? Ah, I mean, you sound like a I love typical. I love that. So if you look at me, so one day, quick joke. One day, someone was looking to find me on social media, and they mistakenly went to my Instagram page. Ah, and they were looking for the LinkedIn Larry, which is the serious girl. <laughs> That's a girl. Sorry, I think okay. maybe they have two names. Larry, you need one. I like two <laughs> 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 What they are saying is, I'm boss. dancing, I'm doing one thing. Want me and my kids? We love doing TikTok. Where I mean, oh, wow. if you see me, we're, we're going to go check you out on Instagram. <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> What's your handle? Larry. Larry. I mean, so we'll definitely gonna check, check you out. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well done. So we're so happy. Um, what are you doing for International Women's Day on Friday? Oh, on Friday, I'll be speaking at Impact Her. Oh, yes. Um, talking business. Serious but Larry side. I, I quickly want to go back to your name. Olari Waju is for the male gender. Typically, how did you survive? Talking about oh, status yeah, and that, I mean, that was one of the blessings to my life. You know that as women, one of the things we have is that barrier. Mm. And as a consultant, I started my business at age 24. And people did not take me seriously. Mm. I mean, you're trying to advise someone that's been in business for 20 years and you're 24. In fact, one day someone told me, Larry, my business is, your, my business is older than you. What are you <laughs> coming to tell me? Yeah. But one thing that name had done for me is that he has opened doors. I've mm -hmm. sent emails and they have said, sir, and I, was, I won't say anything. It works. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will have given me the contract before I appear. And I, I say, oh. <laughs> they say, where's your boss, the Mr. Larry? Right? I said, no. It's me. It's me. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in the meeting. Oh, that's right here. Okay, that's, that's actually Michelle's name. Well, Larry, Larry, Larry. I think I'll start using it for her now. <laughs> That's all we can take on today's show. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. All right. Bye-bye.